they knocked it down to two hundred and uh, two hundred fifty thousand, which wow. is Jeez. half half a million, right? Which is nothing compared to filmmaking today. Yeah, but I feel like even on a micro, what you would consider a micro budget, I guess. Um, yeah. I feel like it looks it looks good. Yeah, the fi- the yeah. film, the graininess, every the lighting, everything looks looks great. It's what you've come to know as Kevin's kind of style. You know his yeah. slice of life kind of kind of uh, laid back um, cinematography, I guess you would say. But it works though. It does. He makes it work because it. We all know if you're a fan, you know that he's he's all about the. Uh, the dialogue, you know, pushing yeah. pushing his narrative through intensive dialogue. There's not much more that happens. It's just conversations. You could say uh, it's he's kind of like maybe like Tarantino without the without the, the criti- yeah the, the critical violence, yeah. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that's the end of that's the end of my swamp. <laughs> Short and sweet. Short and sweet. This nice. Week. Nice. <laughs> Who next? Who can top that? Right here. Anybody fucking see people that I worked with in the past? Right. Yes. Is there a real Amy? Is there a real Amy? Uh, let me see. Was there an Amy? I gotta think on this one. When I wrote the monologue. I know I wrote it for myself to act because I was like, boy, it seems fun whenever I write a monologue for people and they do it. I was like, I'd like to fucking do that. But my character's Silent Bob. But I was like, well, I do a line. Maybe I'll do a monologue. And then like three lines into the performance... I regretted the decision. Because <laughs> I was just like, I can't fucking memorize lines. That's why I didn't play Randall. Like, I wrote the role of Randall and Clerks to play myself. That's why he's got all the best jokes. But as we got close to, like, production, I was like, I can't memorize all these lines. Who wrote this shit? So, years later, the same thing. I got filled with delusions of grandeur somehow after Mallrats. And I was like, maybe I'll give myself a fucking monologue to do in Chasing Amy. When we got there at the table, I tried spitting it out, and I couldn't do it. It was fucking really nerve-wracking. I just, like, prepared the crew right before we shot, because that was the only time we shot with Jason Mewes on that movie. So right before we shot, I pulled all the keys together from all the apartments. I was like, tonight, we're shooting with Jason Mewes, and it could be the best night of our shooting lives or the longest. Um, You know, it may be a start-stop process where he does a line... And then we stop the camera, and I prep them with the next line. We turn on the camera, and we do it again and shit. Because we didn't have digital. We were burning actual film. So I was like, so be prepared, man. And then we sit down, and Muse spits out his fucking dialogue like crazy. It was just really, really wonderful. And it comes to me, and I'm like, you're chasing fuck line? You know? <laughs> and it just began this horrible process of fucking, like, trying to spit out that monologue. And then at a certain point, I got okay with the fact that I was like, oh, I'm the writer. So I could just fucking write this as I'm sitting here, man. So I just started fucking saying shit just to fill the space. And, you know, I was one of those really dictatorial directors back then about, like, do the lines, do them as fucking written. That is the line. That's the Bible. Say it exactly like this. And I'd give people line readings and shit. So there I am sitting across from a dude who I've just been berating for fucking like 20 days going, do it fucking right. You're fucking everything up. If you want to say funny things, put it in your own fucking screenplay one day. <laughs> he did me one an Oscar. So, uh, so I'm sitting across from him. I'm spitting up, made, spitting out made up lines and shit. And uh, finally, he goes, "What the fuck, dude? Like, you're just those lines are not in the fucking script." I was like, "I know I'm the writer. I can do this." He's like, Ooh. Um, Jason Mewes, on the other hand, just laughing the whole time because like I couldn't fucking do. It. He's like, "Acting's hard, isn't it?" Moves. <laughs> and then I remember it was I think it was Lee Ron Skippy uh, with the camera. He was in. It was the grip. Uh, he, they were wrapping up after we were finally done, like hours into the evening at the Marina Diner, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, man, that Jason Mewes, you got to watch out. He's a tough guy to shoot with, man. He had us here all night. I was like, shut the fuck up." <laughs> So, I know the speech I wrote just to see if I could do a speech, just to give myself a speech. But was I chasing Amy? Uh, no, I don't think there was ever an actual, like, person. It definitely came from personal experience. Like, uh, the whole movie was kind of uh, predicated on my relationship with Joey Adams at the time, and a little bit. She was a little more worldly than me, and it fucked with my head, because I was from, like, suburban New Jersey and shit. Didn't know there were gay people or black people. So uh, <laughs> so I was kind of sheltered. And this movie was my way of dealing with that. I came, I come from people, it's not really common anymore these days, but I came, come from very sexually insecure stock. Jersey males, uh, very much like this. At least the Jersey males I know. Maybe it was in the water in the islands. Jason Mewes, 
Brian Johnson, Walter Flanagan, the people I came up with, same perspective back then, which was just like, oh my God, like I can't deal with this person having had a relationship prior to me and fucking seeing that person around and feeling sexually inferior, sexually insecure. So everyone always wanted to date like virgins because then you have to deal with a sexual history or something like that. So Chasing Amy was actually me divesting myself of that. Like, I, I wrote it as therapy, either the cheapest or most expensive form of therapy there was, because <laughs> uh, it was only like $250,000, to, uh, to get it off my chest, to fucking like, just like, ah, write it all down, all that shit, like, and be honest about it. And when I was done writing it, I was kind of like free. It was strange. I was like, holy shit. And when the movie was done, I was real fucking free. You know, I'd come around to a grown-up point of view. I was no longer a fucking teenager uh, from New Jersey. My point of view was just like, why do you want to be with somebody who hasn't seen the world? Like, go find people who have seen the fucking world. Be with people who have, have lots of fucking experience and learn from those people. Maybe they'll teach you to have experiences and shit like that. So at that point, I was like, I'm done dating virgins. I only want to date whores. And, uh, <laughs> and I met my wife. So it was... Uh, <laughs> Um, so no, there was no like, uh, there was no, fuck it, I'm, uh, it was Saturday night sex night, no more. Um, <laughs> damn it. There was no like uh, the true Amy story, that was just a monologue to write, but the idea of, of uh, being, you know, like Colden, that was very much me at the time that I wrote that. Any last words, fellas? I know it's it's your pick, right, James? Um, yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, it is. Because it was, yeah, it was, uh, Anaris picked Kung Fu Hustle, Chasing Amy, and then it goes to James, I believe. So, uh, have you any, any thoughts on what we should talk about? Yeah, I actually think I want to do, I think I have one, I've been wanting to do it for a while. Um, it's a totally different movie than what we just did. <laughs> um, I th- <laughs> Uh, not that I didn't enjoy this movie. I love this movie. It was a great pick, Diego. Um, thank you, thank you. But, I don't get I don't um, get those much praises from you, so I, I take them in. <laughs> <laughs> no, all your picks, all your picks are good, man. It's uh, Bone Tomahawk. Oh, okay, okay. I don't think we haven't done that filmmaker any films from him yet. So no. that's a fun one. Uh, Kurt Russell, Patrick um, Wilson, a of David Arquette, yeah, Patrick uh, Wilson. Mm-hmm. And um, the guy from Lost, I can't remember his name. Oh, you got me on that one. I never, I've never, I was never a fan of Lost. I never, I only watched it after it was done. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Bone Tomahawk. Wow, insane, insane movie. Is it streaming anywhere? Prime, it's right? It's on Prime. Prime. Yes. Nice. Um, I'm excited because this is like a horror, one of the very few horror westerns that are out there. Yeah. Nice. I'm going in blind. I'm not going to watch the trailer. So I'm going to go yeah, in blind to this. It's going to be fun, Diego. You're going to like it. I mean, <laughs> hey, you, hey, fun. if you're saying it, man, I'm liking it. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good time. It's a good one. It's crazy. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Wow. What a, what a wild pick, dude. Right? Yeah, I've been holding on to that one for a little bit. I wanted to, to save it for when we got closer to... You know, oh. the, the spooky season, but um, I figured might as well do it now. I think um, we can start doing that mid September. We'll mm-hmm. start picking mm-hmm. just oh, exclusively yeah. spooky. You know, we're always going to start a little early because it's, Hall- it's Halloween every day. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Spooky. Hey. Spooky. <laughs> and we're going to pull out that uh, the original Tales from the Crypt intro, too. Watch. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> Um, anything else, guys? Closing words? Uh, definitely, uh, subscribe to, uh, whatever you're listening to us on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, um, Sodes, um, uh, Spreaker, um, Stitcher. Stitcher, a whole bunch of, uh, uh, third party, uh, podcast platforms that we don't know we're a part of. Please, please uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, five stars, whatever it may be. Hopefully, you have time to leave a positive review. And if you have another extra few seconds, follow us on Instagram. We have our own Instagram. It is drop the mic underscore podcast. Me and Wes are both attached to that one. You can comment uh, on all of our posts there. Ask us questions. What movie 
Uh, if we have another movie that you want us to review, uh, we can we can take that request and hopefully get that done for you. Um, if you don't want to be so public, DM us, ask us some questions there if you want. Totally up to you. Um, we're a pretty pretty nice guy, so um, <laughs> don't be scared to talk to us. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's about it. Nice. nice, Diego. Anything? Any plugs? Shout out to Anaris. Uh, yes. Hopefully, he comes back well rested and uh, well relaxed from his uh, trip. Uh, other than that, uh, please, please, please wear your mask. Yeah. Oh yeah. Help us get past this, you know. Yeah. Let's move on already. Be sub- uh, be conscious of um, the people around you, and also. Like, if you want to party, like, that's fine. I don't judge you. Uh, but please be mindful that there's still a virus out there. And there's still people getting sick every day. And people dying every day from this. If you're, um, going, if you're going to a gathering, just, yeah. you know, be smart about yeah. it. Too. Yeah, yeah. I really, like, I, don't go yeah. in there reckless and yeah. start licking door handles. And yeah, I definitely, I definitely do agree with you with that. Um, and yeah, just be safe, everybody. Um, you know, the the safer you are, the the better we're off. You know, and you know, right. take this seriously. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Awesome. Well said. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, happy Friday. Be safe. Happy Friday. Oh yeah. Have a great, uh, great weekend. Great week until. Uh, We'll see you here next week. Next week for Bone Tomahawk. Bone oh, Tomahawk. Tomahawk. Oh yeah. Dang. Oh, it's gonna go wild. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah. Gnarly. Um, oh yeah. All right, James. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun being on here again. I missed you guys last week. <laughs> we missed you too, brother. Always. Thank you. Thank you. All right. all right, guys. Take care, everybody. Peace. Have a good one. Bye. Good, good night. So you're saying a person is a virgin until they've had intercourse with a member of the opposite sex. Isn't that the standard definition? <laughs> Again, with your standards. I think virginity is lost when you make love for the first time. With a member of the opposite sex? Why? Why only then? Because that's the standard. We me tell you. So if a virgin is raped, then she's still a virgin. No, of course not. But rape is not the standard, so she's had sex, but not the standard idea of sex. Hence, according to your definition, she'd still be a virgin. Uh, okay, fine, I'll revise. Uh-huh. Uh, <clears throat> virginity is lost when the hymen is broken. So then I lost my virginity at 10. Really? Because, mm, see, I fell on a fence post when I was 10, and it broke my hymen. Okay, second revision. Virginity is lost through penetration. Physical penetration or emotional? Emotional penetration? Mm, well, I fell in love hard with Caitlin Bree when we were in high school. Physical penetration? We had sex. Yeah, but not real sex. I moved to have that remark stricken from the record on account of it makes you come off as completely naive and infantile. Well, where's the penetration in lesbian sex? A finger? Okay, I've had my finger up my ass. I wouldn't say I've had anal sex. <laughs> Observe. You're kidding me. How? Our bodies are built up as a child, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but I mean, Jesus, doesn't that hurt? Sure, but in that good way. You know, it's, it's only a once in a while thing. These are for really special occasions. How about not so special occasions? Tongue only. <laughs>